Hi children, in this video we will be dealing with the family Solanaceae. So for this we have to make use of a key. This is a key which was introduced in the first chapter. The same key is displayed and as you know a recap of a key it has different statements and each statement is called a lead and each lead comprises two options in the form of couplets. So you select one option and delete the other option. So you have to refer to a key when you are doing a herbarium. So this will be provided to you all as a handout. So we are dealing with the family Solanaceae. So let us analyze the first feature inflorescence whether it is occurring as a cluster or singly. Yes, Solanaceae is occurring as a cluster. Now I brought two samples of Solanaceae. This is the wild Solanaceae you can see on the roadside and this is the Mexican Solanaceae. Both are occurring in clusters. See you can see this cluster indicating it is showing cymose inflorescence. Here also it shows cymose inflorescence. the oldest flower and on the lateral side the buds. This is the wild petunia and the next is the example of the Mexican petunia. See this is also in cymose inflorescence. So both samples I brought. So inflorescence, cymose inflorescence. So we will tick cymose and I am going to strike off race mode. So this is how you have to proceed from one statement to the other statement and therefore it serves as a lead. Next, so I am going to rule out it does not occur singly. So I am going to rule out the second lead. Now the third lead is dealing with the flower. Okay, whether the flower is bracteate or abracteate, whether the flower is actinomorphic or zygomorphic, whether the flower is unisexual or bisexual, whether it is complete or incomplete whether it is pedicillate or sessile, tetramerous, pentamerous or trimerous, then the last category whether it is hypogynous, perigynous and epigynous and finally the flower, uh, the color of the flower. Now to talking with respect to petunia, whether it is a wild petunia or the ornamental petunia, both the petunias are bracteate. After indicating it on the board, we will be examining the flower. Then, Actinomorphic or zygomorphic, the option it shows is it is actinomorphic. Then whether it is unisexual or bisexual, the option we have to select is it is bisexual. Then whether it is complete or incomplete, complete it has all the four worlds. So it is complete, so I am ticking complete. Then whether it has a stalk, if it has a stalk it is called pedicillate or if it does not have a stalk it is called sessile, it has a stalk. So I am indicate pedicillate. Then you count the number of petals and find out whether it is pentamerous or trimerous, it is pentamerous. So you take pentamerous. Then whether it is hypogynous, perigynous or epigynous, it is hypogynous. And lastly the color of the flower, it is violet in color. So now we will examine a flower. Okay. Uh, this is the Mexican petunia. See, showing cymose inflorescence. You can see the oldest at the top and at the sides we have the young flowers which are represented by buds. So this is the Mexican petunia and this is the wild petunia. You can see on the roadside it is a creeper. Okay, see this is also showing cymose inflorescence. Very clearly you can see the oldest flower and on the lateral sides the buds. So with these two samples I am going ahead. So these are the two common petunia found in our locality. So I am going to start the dissection. First we are going to dissect the outer world called calyx. Now we say petunia is pedicillate because it has a pedicel. See the stalk it is pedicillate because it has this pedicel. So now we are going to dissect the sepal. So sepal is the outer world of green color bracts like structures. Yes, I have to peel it out and only get the sepal.
the latest stick this is the sepal next i am going to display the petal you can see the petals all are fused see so now what i have to do i have to make a slit through the corolla it's like a funnel i have to make a slit to display it so this will be stuck like this next whorl is the andrisium this is very very important when you take the andrisium you can see the stamens are attached to the petals for this situation where you see the stamens are attached to the petal such a condition is called epipetalous when the stamens are attached to the petal it's called epipetalous so you have to display it in such a way to show the stamens attached to the petal and lastly we have the gynecium the innermost whorl that is from the middle you have to dissect and get the innermost structure it seems to be single but it's act actually bicarpulary it's having two carpels you can understand by looking at the tip it is bilobed if you zoom and see you can see the tip is bilobed so this is the carpel which is having two stigma and the two styles are fused and a common ovary so that should be stuck last now i made a herbarium now i'm indicating the whorls the first whorl what we see in green is the calyx the next whorl the next whorl is the corolla then we have the andrisium and the last whorl gynecium so once again and then most importantly which family deals with it deals with the family solanaceae so i'm going to indicate the name of the family solanaceae so once again i made the herbarium of family solanaceae here the first floral whorl that is stuck is the calyx which comprises the sepals the next floral whorl is the corolla which comprises the petals the third whorl is the andrisium which comprises the stamens and remember the stamens are attached to the petals and the last whorl is the gynecium now let's talk with respect to the number the number of sepals that represent the calyx are 5 and they are free see these are actually free then the number of petals that constitute the corolla are 5 if you count the entire flower there are five petals one two three is displayed here another two so there are five petals and these five petals are fused now when you count the number of andrisium you can see there are five stamens and these stamens are fused with the petal and such a condition is called epipetalous condition and lastly about the gynecium as i told you it looks like a single carpel it is not single there are two carpels that are fused so it is bicarpulary clear now against this what is stuck we have to give description that will be displayed on the board so once again this is a dry mount of the herbarium there is a wet mount as well as dry mount but for you all for the practicals you all are doing only the dry mount and very very important of all towards your left side you have to indicate the name of the collector date and the place so I'll, that also will be indicated name of the collector date when it was collected place and very very important which 
sample I took, which specimen? See, once again look at the label it should carry, it should carry the name of the collector, the person who collected, the date of collection, the place where it was collected and the specimen. So now I am going to fill this in. name x y z ok I am just giving the name of the person who collected x y z today's date 30 10 20 2020 the place we got it from Tevra and the specimen is the Mexican petunia. Two petunias were displayed because it is commonly found in our locality, the Mexican petunia and the wild petunia. The one that is displayed is the Mexican petunia. So that is all about the herbarium. But do not forget adjacent to each stuck specimen you are giving the characteristics which is going to be shown on the board. Okay, so now moving on to the board. So first analyzing the features of the calyx, as we all know the calyx comprises the sepals. So we are giving the number of sepals. So now in this flower what is going to be indicated in pink ink is indicating what we have seen in this flower. Okay. So the number of sepals we observed in the me Mexican petunia is 5. So you are giving 5 sepals. Next. Is it polycephalus or gamosepalus? You found it was free. So we will go for the option. It is polycephalus. Next, the type of estuation. Remember, when it is polypetalus or polycephalus, you have to observe how it is attached at the end. Here it is attached end to end without overlapping. So such an estuation is called valvate and lastly the color definitely we found that the sepals are all green so now the characteristics to calyx is completed okay so with reference to the key i got or derived the features next regarding the corolla so moving to the corolla corolla number of petals we know the number of petals were five then was it free or fused? It was fused like a funnel. So we will go for the option gamma and the ending will be petalus. Then type of estuation here, whenever it is fused, just write valvate estuation. And the color of the flower that we selected, the petunia appears or is found in different shades white pink and violet very common are these three shades the one which we have taken into examination is the violet color so that is violet so i have inferred the uh, the four features of the corolla from the key so from the key i have got the four features now next moving on to the andre ship the first feature indicates the number of stamens if you see the number of stamens, if you count the number of stamens carefully, you can see there are 5 stamens. Then type of fusion, there are different types of fusions. Here the fusion which was clearly shown in the herbarium and especially when such a flower is taken, this should be mandatory. That is this stamen is attached to the petal that should be displayed in your herbarium. Do not detach the stamen and stick it, it should be attached with the petal. So two worlds together. So it should be interpreted as epipetalus because the stamens are cut, connected to the petal. Next feature type of fixation of the anther to the stamen. So there are four types of fixation. When you analyze it closely, when you bring it close, you can see there is a stamen and the anther will represent with another color. You can see it is attached like the base fixed. Clear? Then if it is like this, it is called dorsi fixed. No? Then the next option is 
it is running through the anther so it is not running through the anther as adenate it is not dorsi fixed like dangling but you can see it is basi fixed so we opt for basi fixed and last intros and extros whether it is hidden inside the flower whether the stamen are completely hidden in the flower or exposed that you have to just check it for yourself i'll show you a flower closely and you can can you see the stamen inside i'll bring it close to make your zoom and find out so here you can see the stamen is hidden inside deep inside you have to peel out or open out the corolla to find the stamen see i am just opening like a book and there only you can find the stamen see you can see the stamen attached to the petal and it was hidden so such a flower where the stamen is hidden in simple words hidden it is known as intros whereas in shoe flower hibiscus it is exposed so it is called extros so the option i take here is intros or extros i go for the option intros now again from the key i got four features once again five stamens the stamens are attached to the petals then they are basi fixed and lastly they are these stamens are hidden in the corolla so i go for the option intros and rule out the option extros last gynecium the last ball now for gynecium alone there are six features or parameters we have to analyze only three can be analyzed with the naked eye the remaining three with the taking the cross section through the ovary only we will get so first what we can analyze from the flower is the first three leads first lead is the number of carpels as i told you it looks or appears like a single carpel but looking at the tip we can identify that it is bicarpellary see the tip it shows it is bicarpellary so two carpels next whether it is apocarpus or syncarpus here clearly i told you two carpels are fused fused condition is called syncarpus free condition is called apocarpus so i'll select syncarpus next whether it is hypogynous perigynous or epigynous when i dissected the flower and took it out i saw the other whorls are arising from below so when i took it see now also i am peeling it out you can see the other whorls are arising from below see all are arising from below you can see the ovary is having a superior position and the other whorls are arising from below see this is the ovary this is the style going up into the bilobe stigma and you can see the stamens are arising from below petals are arising from below and the sepals also are arising below so this indicates hypogynous condition that is ovary is superior so here this is the only statement or lead which has three options hypogynous perigynous epigynous and the option i select is hypogynous now remaining three leads which can be only observed by taking a cross section through the ovary see this is the ovary only by taking a very thin slice through the ovary and observing it under the microscope i can get the remaining but you can just remember it by this diagram i am drawing the cross section of the ovary see it's circular in outline and it is divided into two chambers and you can see in these two chambers the ovules i am drawing numerous i am not counting i am going on adding the ovules now from this we are going to describe how many locules are there in this cs in this cross section there are two locules then how many ovules see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 in another flower 20 in and of varies from flower to flower anyway the number of ovules numerous many 
and such a placentation where the ovules arise from the axle is called axial placentation. So I drew the cross section so that you can elicit or get these three points. So once again the number of locules when you take a cross section how many chambers is it, is it having if I highlight it with a color you can see clearly how many chambers it has it has two chambers so it is bilocular or it has two locules clear then the number of ovules countless many and lastly type of placentation you saw the placentation it's arising from the axle or from the center axial placentation clear so once again regarding gynoecium or the female reproductive organ of the flower the number of carpels two carpels and these carpels are few so it's in carpus then the ovary is superior so i wrote hypogynous then the remaining three leads is only after taking a cross section the number of locules two locules the number of ovules many and the type of placentation is the axial placentation and then you wind up with uh, the herbarium with the floral formula for floral fl formula you are taking the flower into consideration you are taking the first lead second lead third lead and fourth lead with these four leads you are making the floral formula now so you have to learn the short forms for bracteate it is indicated as br and for abracteate it is indicated as ebr next for actinomorphic it is indicated by the symbol a circle with a cross and zygomorphic it is indicated like this then for unisexual if it's male it is shown like this way if it is female flower it is shown like this way or if it is bisexual both male and female together it in, this is indicative of bisexual next complete if it's complete means all the four worlds are present which are the four worlds calyx corolla and rhesium and gynoecium but here we know calyx starts with the alphabet c corolla starts with the alphabet c and rhesium starts with the alphabet a and gynoecium starts with the alphabet g now both c's are there so what they, they have done is they have converted the first c into k so k stands for calyx c stands for corolla a stands for andrician and g stands for gynoecium so now this is indicative of a complete flower it's having all the four worlds so now i'm going to bring the floral formula the first parameter in the floral formula is the first lead whether it's bracteate or a bracteate the flower we have taken today is a bracteate flower i have taken a bud and you can see this is the bract so it indicates that this is a bracteate flower because there's a bract if this bract was not present i'm removing it it is called a bracteate so this flower is a bracteate flower so i'll start off by writing br next give a space whether it is actinomorphic or zygomorphic very clearly from the flower itself you can understand you can cut it into equal halves when a plane is running through the center any plane running through the center you can get it in two equal halves okay so i'll go for the option actinomorphic which is represented by this symbol next unisexual or bisexual it had both the andrician male reproductive organ and the female reproductive organ so we have to go for the option bisexual which is indicated with this symbol now is it a complete flower or an incomplete flower definitely it's a complete flower comprising calyx corolla and rhesium and gynoecium so i'm placing the alphabets k for calyx c for corolla a for andrician and g for gynoecium it's not complete now you must count the number of sepals we saw the number of sepals were 5 and there itself you have to indicate were the petals uh, sepals free or fused they were free so you put that 5 free if it were fused you must put it in brackets so 5 in bracket indicate a gamo sepalous condition but here it is not gamo sepalous it is poly sepalous so you put that 5 plain next petals how many petals are there we saw again it is 5 and these 5 petals were fused so there you have to put a bracket indicating 
gamopetalous condition. Now talking about the andresium, how many stamens were there? Again 5. And we notice that these stamens were attached to which valve were attached to the corolla and such a condition is called epipetalous condition. So this will be indicated on top see. So the andresium is connected to the corolla. Next gynesium, how many carpels are there? We saw two carpels and we know those two carpels are fused, syncarpels. So I put it in bracket. Now very very importantly, where is the ovary superior, inferior or half inferior, half superior? It is superior. Now you must remember where you have to put the dash. If it is superior ovary, the dash should be down. If it is inferior ovary, the dash should be on top. And if it is half inferior, half superior, the dash should be adjacent to G. So which is the option we are going to select? It is a hypogynous ovary or superior ovary. So I put the dash here. Now our floral formula is complete for Solanaceae. So definitely you have to sp have space at the base of the herbarium to indicate the floral formula. Once again reiterating the floral formula, it should have the four parameters which we have seen in the key whether it is bracteate or abracteate our flower we took is bracteate. So you are representing by the symbol BR. Then second parameter it is actinomorphic which is represented by the symbol circle and inside cross that is it is cut into equal planes when it is cut through the center plane running through the center. Then third parameter it is a unisex bi, sorry bisexual flower having both the andresium and gynesium. Then the fourth parameter it is a complete flower having calyx, corolla, andresium and gynesium. Now looking into the number of sepals 5 sepals and they are free. So leave 5 without bracket. Then corolla, the number of petals 5 and they are fused. Then andresium, the number of stamens 5 and these 5 stamens are connected with the corolla. So the connection is given on top. And lastly we have the gynesium, the number of carpels 2 and these carpels are fused. And last and most importantly the position of the ovary it is superior or it is hypogynous. So this is the floral formula. Do not forget to wrap up your herbarium with a floral formula which is mandatory. Clear? And this is a unique feature of solanacea bicarpillary, bilocular and syncarpus condition. Clear? And also do not forget our herbarium should have on the left Side, that is on your right hand side you should indicate the name of the collector, the date of collection, the place of collection and the sample which you use or the specimen used. Stick your the four worlds and adjacent to the four worlds you have to give the characteristics for calyx the four characters, for corolla the four characters, uh, for andresium the four characters and for gynesium the six characteristics and you have to wind up with the floral formula. So I hope family solanaceae is clear. Thank you.